okay 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 i admit i admit my motivations were not entirely professional i haven't come here for compliments i want the criticism of a serious man so what is it that fills the whole heart love hello and welcome to national herald i am rukmini sen uh, we are going to discuss today theater world theater indian theater and specifically a play called letters of love which is being featured in Borderlight Theater Festival at Cleveland, Ohio. Letters of Love is a play uh, created by Readings in the Shed. So Readings in the Shed presents a theatrical reading of original letters, some scandalous and some passionate. The show includes love letters between people like Scott Fitzgerald and Zelda, letters by Oscar Wilde, Frida Kahlo and many others. I'm joined by the cast and crew of Letters of Love. Uh, I have Nik uh, Nikhil Katara, who's the director. I have Himali Kuthari, who is the creative director. I have Kaila Souza, who's the actress in the play. We have Vikrant Thakur, who has done the light design. Varun Gupta, who has done sound design. Porus Dubash, who has done the cinematography because it's a virtual theater festival. Anubha Patnayak, who has done the costume. So welcome everyone. Tell me, how did you think of uh, Letters of Love? And uh, how did you think of going uh, virtually with it and to a festival? Actually, Letters of Love is something which we've been doing every year with NCPA as a, uh, every 14th of February, which is, the, uh, which is Valentine's Day. We come together with a bunch of letters of love written by famous personalities, which are frankly quite scandalous. And uh, it's been like a tradition now. We've been doing it every year at the NCP on the 14th of February. Himali and me, we started this about 2017, 2018, I believe. And uh, that was the first time when we wrote the where, where we shared the letters of Albert Einstein, the playboy. And we shared the letters of uh, Marie Curie, the longing... Uh, uh, girlfriend and you know like we were trying to particularly look at the letters and somewhere we just found that there is a never-ending trove of love letters and 2021 is when uh, the only show that we did live was this particular one and, and uh, we had the very big fortune of my friend Poros Dubash being shooting the play uh, because then we uh, and he also did the post-production so then we had some material uh, to send it uh, to the Bottle Light Festival. I'm actually quite keen to hear from uh, Porus. Porus, tell me, how uh, did you plan the shoot? Because I understand shooting a film or shooting for television, but shooting a play, did you uh, shoot it uh, shot by shot? Did you have? Did you shoot it scene by scene? So when we actually start uh, like planning the stuff, like I get to, I got to know about this play that Nicholas is shooting on 14th of February. Like, a week ago, I, it was probably a week, so I didn't have a lot of time for preparation. I had just seen one rehearsal, so I had only four hours before the actual show to actually plot my camera moves and actually get into the mood of filmmaking for theater. Because when you are on screen, everything is scripted, everything is ready. The cinematographer just comes it takes the director's instructions and he just goes ahead with it. Like there's a cut here, there's a stop here, we're doing a retake, all of that's there. But when it comes to actual theater, in terms of where you don't have a clue as to what is gonna happen, and you have just seen one rehearsal, so you're just eyeballing at the artists and the actors who are on stage. And so was there a rehearsal with the actors? Uh, did yeah. you do a camera rehearsal with the actors? Were I the did. actors told about camera, how to look at camera, how not to look at camera? No, we kept it as natural as possible because the camera was not main. The main was the audience that was sitting in the auditorium. Our main focus was the audience in the auditorium and not the camera. That's why it made it so natural because when it was, it was shot and when it came out, it felt like it was connecting to the audience because there was audience in the auditorium. We were not intending for this video to be as a shoot kind of thing. But when we actually went forth and when we saw the final product, all of us, like all nine of us were amazed about it. 
as natural as possible because the camera was not main. The main was the audience that was sitting in the auditorium. Our main focus was the audience in the auditorium and not the camera. That's why it made it so natural because when it was, it was shot and when it came out, it felt like it was connecting to the audience because there was audience in the auditorium. We were not intending for this video to be as a shoot kind of thing. But when we actually went forth and when we saw the final product, all of us, like all nine of us were amazed about it. How, how was the sound uh, planned, if I may ask? Uh, uh, I, I think that Warren will be the right person to answer. Yeah, yeah. So, I, Varun. So, Nikhil, uh, uh, we were, me and Nikhil were actually working on some other project, actually. And uh, this was the time when suddenly Nikhil one day called me and he said that, uh, you know, this show that we do every 14th of Feb, which is called Letters of Love. And uh, this time around, we again plan to do it with some music and whatever. So will you be interested? So I said, yeah, why not? And so then the conversation was very simple and very straightforward. It was like, it's just going to be one simple thing. Like people are going to read letters and whatever you feel like playing or designing on top of it, that's about it. I was like, okay, I thought, and so basically in the show, I'm also playing the keyboard and I'm not a keyboard player, actually. I'm a percussionist and a uh, music producer, but I don't play the keyboard particularly that to life. <laughs> so I said, yes, thinking that this is going to be a very simple, plain, uh, simple task and just, just go with the flow, nothing complicated. Cut to two days before we were supposed to stage the show, Nikhil Katara walks into uh, walks into the rehearsal room and I'm, I'm uh, looking at the show for the first time, okay? I have not designed one single piece of music as of now. And Nikhil Katara walks in and we start rehearsing and we start, like I start designing something, something works, works, works. And then that is the point where Nikhil Katara suddenly starts throwing challenges at me. And he has a very sweet way of throwing challenges, okay? Like, he'll never say, let's do this. He'll say, can we do this? If not, it's okay. And, and we can move on. And then as a musician or as a creative person, you feel very challenged also, right? You're like, like, now I need to get this done because this has been thrown at me. So, uh, so uh, starting from simple music to uh, suddenly Nikhil Katara walking in and, you know, playing this really... Uh, Afro native symphonic sort of a music uh, to me. And he said that, you know, I like for this particular letter, I was thinking of opening with something like this. And I was like, dude, I'm not Hans Zimmer. <laughs> you can't just walk into the room and throw this. But thankfully, I think in two days, I, mean, I think we've been lucky. In two days, we managed to sort of uh, get a comprehensive sound design for the entire show. And it's, it's, it's a lengthy one. I mean, it's not a short small show it's a lengthy show i think hour and a half or something nikhil if i'm not wrong 10 minutes yeah, yeah. so so uh, the sound must you must have done the sound and it's part of the post production right or was played while the performance no, was happening no it's live no it's live it's all the entire music is being played live whatever you hear in the recording it's uh, all that i played uh, while the show was on and that's what got recorded and that's what it is but it, there's no, there wasn't any sort of uh, too much planning because as I said, there were just two days to the entire rehearsal. So there wasn't too much planning and, you know, fixing parts and whatnot. It was just to understand the feel of every letter. And most of the stuff that you hear that I've played during the show, it's just uh, uh, keeping a framework in mind, but then improvising, improvising, improvising while we are at the show. So it's, it was very, very organic. And uh, the best part was that we, uh, I think none of us, we sort of like, we didn't block our minds to a particular type of music or sound design. So that helped me to sort of, you know, improvise and uh, be free while I'm playing. It would be scary to, uh, to perform live, to play live while, uh, the play is being filmed also and the play is happening also and uh, there is no stopping. The play is continuous, right? You, you were not stopping scene by scene. You were... The funny, like, part was, the funny part was that Varun was right next to the stage while the entire show was being done. Oh, <laughs> oh goodness. Yeah, so he was right bang in front of the audience. There was no hiding anything. Let me bring in Kyla. So Kala, how has it been for you as a theatre artist to be uh, shot 
uh, to be filmed. So uh, I wish that Asmit was here. He's not. So I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, my experience. I've always been a theater baby. Uh, I'm way more comfortable on stage and in front of an audience than I am on camera. I'm getting better at the camera stuff because I've done a, a few films and a couple of ads and stuff. But um, I prefer being on stage. And so when you have a setup like this, where I'm allowed to do what I love and be on stage, but there's also a camera somewhere, but I don't have to play to it. It's the perfect scenario for an actor like me to not have to worry about what side and should, where should I look, you know, and where's the camera? I just get to do my thing. And I think Forrest did an amazing job with, with the cinematography. Um, this team is fantastic. I mean, the fact that we're all very much in love with theater we love performing we love telling stories and we do it in our own way whether it's Nikhil and Himali curating these letters which is not an easy thing to do because these people are amazing and scandalous and passionate people but they're all real life people so the fact that they've been able to consistently over the past three years choose these particular letters and these particular love stories is what's made it so interesting for me as an actor and as an audience member, because I've seen um, their other Letters of Love shows. And the fact that we have like Vikrant and Varun and Porus and the costumes with Anubha and all, all of that coming together, I think is what made this really fun. And uh, so th that's kind of what I love to answer your question, like mm -hmm. about live theater. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with doing both, but I prefer the stage. <laughs> but but that must be something that uh, even if you don't like camera, that must be now becoming increasingly a requisite, right? To kind of work yeah, with the camera I mean, in these in this pandemic. Absolutely. So I I'm I'm also aware that you know I I would like to do more film uh, and TV work. So I don't want to say you know I don't like doing camera because then nobody will cast me and I won't get any work. I'm happy to do it. Uh, but I think yeah, like it is. We're all now very much used to zoom and everything has become digital and and even when we audition now we have to send in self tapes rather than going in person so you do get more comfortable with it um i think if we were specifically shooting this play with the thing of we have a multi-camera setup and we'll have close-ups here and close-ups there because we didn't have that and it came organically and Porus was able to figure out, you know, when to focus on which actor and, and you know, Nikhil and Himali, they had a specific vision in mind. I think that's what worked. Um, I think it would have been uh, different if we were specifically told, okay, for this scene or this letter, we will only be doing a close up on Asmit or only doing a close up on Kyla, because as an actor, that automatically changes your performance slightly because you know that yeah. the focus is on you. But when you're just on stage and you're you're doing your thing and there's your focus is a live audience, you're playing to everybody instead of just you know um, a camera and then a cameraman. <laughs> That's interesting. It's it's interesting to hear. Uh, uh, I, I I have uh, interviewed many uh, film actors and television actors, but it's interesting to hear a theater person talk about their relationship with camera and this. There's an, uh, there is an element of hesitation clearly uh, there. I, I want to bring in Himali here. And Himali, let's talk about your play. I mean, the reading in the share. Uh, uh, how did you get involved with the play? What actually motivated you to uh, do the play? Are you uh, talking of letters of love in particular, or readings in the yeah, share? Yeah. Letters of love. So um, I don't have a choice in the matter, actually. From the time I got roped into readings in the shed, April 2018, uh, it's pretty much been like, so this month we are, let's do this. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's been great. So we've been doing shows since April 2018, uh, up to March 20th, uh, March 2020, we had done 21 shows, uh, which is pretty much one show a month on an average uh, letters of love is something which we decided to do in 2019 uh, sorry um, I'm so lost with yours now 
having been locked down in this year for the, for the better that's part that's happening of the that's happening with all of us in pandemic yeah. i think so when we did the first one it was not like we decided this was going to be an annual thing it just happened and uh, we found the idea very interesting uh, and i think what happened after that was we kept Uh, you know we would keep coming across or looking for letters and we like okay we can do this next year and ncpa was super encouraging from the first show so when we did the first show it was a houseful show it was in the beautiful tata gardens uh, at the ncpa it was in the open under the fairy lights the second show again was a houseful show um you know with the, in the same setting this time uh, you know it was our first show after the pandemic set in so um it was uh, in that sense while we were preparing for it we didn't know if we were going to do it uh, live we were going to do it on zoom uh, you know because the preparation of the letters starts very early um, we are already collecting letters for the next one uh, so 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 what what is so special about letters of love for you i mean what is it uh... you know for me what's sorry rukmini uh, what's special uh, particularly for me what really hits me every time i read one of these letters is that here is one emotion which sees no difference you know it doesn't matter if you're albert einstein you're marilyn monroe you are uh, you are you know the uh, president of wherever and the you know uh, school teacher in Span- during the spanish flu or you are you know it's you or me or anybody else over here it just brings it down to such a base level right i mean it's such a base emotion it has all the flavors it has all the facets um and at any particular time each one of us experiences one of the facet and not the other and then you know experiences another so it's very identifiable uh i don't think there's anybody who cannot identify with this emotion uh so you may look at albert einstein and think oh like such a big physicist known for his you know his work in physics known for like his brain and people want to study his brain and all of that but maybe they want to also study his heart a little bit <laughs> uh uh including other parts of the anatomy because he thinks with more than just a brain um so you know um that's how it is i think for me that's fascinating and already i think nikhil and i have shared three or four letters for the next one um i think now people so so say, nikhil let, let me ask nikhil nikhil what's your favorite letter or your favorite letters maybe three of them that's a tough one we have had like really scandalous letters uh we we performed one by warren g harding to the president of the united states and his torrid love affair with his uh with his uh, paramours in some sense in uh, in 2018 that is one of the most scandalous ones we've ever read uh, there are different categories i i personally really loved what kyla performed this year which was heinrich heine uh, the the school teacher who wrote love letters during, during the spanish plague uh, uh, to her then husband and uh, just how what it was in the pandemic then and what it is it was so unreal for us because we were thinking this has never happened in the entire world before the pandemic but but when uh, you hear the words that she's saying and she's talking on masks and all of that to me it connected somewhere and kind of a cathartic to listen to those uh, beautiful of course very beautifully performed by kaila in the show and of course a, a lot of these were exaggerated and uh, by the costumes that anuba brought in and and uh, the light design of vikrant and and varun's uh, beautiful sound design and captured way of uh, porus working So yeah, all of these things really came together for us. Uh, I um, I want to ask Vikrant actually how um, how was it to you know do the lights for these uh, for, for this play because uh, again I mean it's stage and then now there's camera I mean what kind of uh, change in your you know it must it must have required a change in framework in your paradigm how did you work around it. See, so it didn't require much of a change with respect to framework because we had a single camera and it was shooting it as the show was happening as a live show and we get to see it also like that. The only thing is what we have to keep in mind is the intensities because the intensities for the naked eyes and for the cameras are very different. So you just have to uh, take that into consideration and because. 
if we for, on stage if we keep very low light that might get seen by the naked eye but cam, for the camera it won't it might not be sufficient so i had to discuss such things with porus also while we were doing the setup that i i showed him some specific scenes where it would be lower intensities of light and we then checked with the camera also whether that is fine so was this a co- continuous shoot or were the cuts at some point of time were there breaks at some point of time did you do close ups it was a completely continuous shoot without a break not a single cut was uh, done on the video edit even in the final cut you see there's not a single cut you will find it's a continuous shoot i'm just zooming in zooming out panning tilting tilting up and tilting down the basic camera movements i would have done more if i had had a track trolley <laughs> but we and didn't you didn't have, have that we you didn't, didn't have, have that, that. Yeah. So it was a handheld uh, camera. It was a, it was on a it was on a tripod, but I made it in such a way that you get those movements and you get those uh, focus shots where you like people actually enjoy those visual changes in the scene. Like in a movie, when you're actually watching a movie, uh, if you see any Bollywood starter, people like to have that visual change of scene. Or extreme close up, or a extreme wide angle where you're seeing everything. so i was switching between those moments to make sure that if asmit is on one end of the stage drinking beer so i'm just focusing on him and nothing else on stage and uh, when we come, when you talk about lights in that matter so me and vikrant we had a very long discussion like we were actually at it for about 2 and a half hours after their rehearsal was done setting up the lights So, so if you if you shoot it next time, will you want to also have a few cuts here and there? Will you want to shoot uh, some? I would some like scenes, sh- some shots I, separately. I would like to shoot it with three cameras rather than one, rather than just single camera. I would like to shoot it with three cameras, and I would like to be on the director seat next time rather than being a cinematographer, so I can tell the cameraman what exactly, what good shot needs to be taken at that point in time. and we can have one master wide shot and i can play with two different angles in two different cameras so in case if uh, asmit and kela are having a discussion uh, there can be a master shot and there can be two close ups either on asmit and kela they won't even know that it's there but in the final output it will come that way and we should yeah. make a so, great so technical basically a technical director who is sitting with the switcher you will require a, that's an expensive uh, proposition though Yeah. You need a switcher. You need an online. Uh, you need. You need the online director, basically. You need an online switching setup, but it mm. makes a hell of a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And clearly, you are right now working with uh, far less resources, right? I mean, you just you just have have one camera on tripod. Your music is yeah. playing live. Yeah. Your lights are live. There's no change in lights while you're shooting. It's, no, but uh, it's ha- fascinating that you're even trying this. <laughs> no, but we had a lot of things planned on prior that uh, if you have seen the play, there are grill shots. Like there is a jail shot coming in, so I know that those scenes are going to come, and they, I know when they are going to come. So I make sure that when that scene comes, before that, I try to position my camera in that place. So when the light turns on, the audience knows that, ha, huh, this is a scene for the jail and not something else. True. Very, very interesting. I, I want to uh, talk, talk about the costume. How, how has the costume, uh, uh, Anubha? If I uh, is Anubha there? Yes, yes, I'm right here. Uh, um, Anubha, uh, um, how was it uh, for you? I mean, to do costumes for again a play which is not really a play anymore. It's, uh, it's going virtual. Uh, when you, when things are being shot. Uh, I mean, is is it different from your general theater performance? So um, basically, they had their costumes in place. We came in for the Marilyn Monroe dress in particular, and uh, usually there are a lot of things that you keep in mind when you're designing for theater. You know, like suppose the color, the texture, and all of that, because it's supposed to be visible from a distance. And now that it's on film, it's completely different. but uh, we kept that in mind and it was an iconic costume that we had to recreate you know it's the marilyn monroe seven year rich dress and um, so 
like you know for example uh, in theater we try and stay away from a pure white sort of a look because you know it completely washes out the actor so here we kind of played around with the color and the textures a little you know we added some lace trimmings and all i mean while sticking to the silhouette of the dress we tried to make a little few changes that would look good on stage and um, and kaila just carried it off with perfection <laughs> it was great it's all in the dress it's not me <laughs> no really that dress was beautiful and so much fun and i plan on stealing it and keeping it so. you must <laughs> uh, a dress can make a lot of difference if you, if you feel that you're uh, you are the person then a lot of things become easy i mean no oh, definitely i mean i think costume is one of the most underrated things that people talk about especially if it's a live performance because it changes the way you move it changes the way you sit stand because obviously if you're we're wearing a dress and it's white you got to be careful about a lot of things um so <laughs> uh, i love 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 that dress i was so comfortable in it and for a minute and a half i really did feel like marilyn monroe and that was interesting <laughs> and it's the costumes that actually get you into character you know the costumes yeah. hair and makeup and all of that before that it's the actor reciting their lines and once you get into costume yeah. you're the character yeah so yeah that's yeah. that's the difference between a rehearsal and a, a stage performance right i mean that that small transition which is a huge transition actually that happens yeah. with costumes and Uh thank you guys thank you for uh taking this time out for us for national herald